Good morning. This is Tracy here. And today, as today is Friday, where I'm at. And I want everyone to know as we walk into the weekend, run into the weekend, skip into the weekend, trip into the weekend, however we enter our weekend, I want everyone to know and to think and to remember about everyone else. Let them underestimate you. Don't try and prove yourself. Let them underestimate you. Let them think that you can't do it. Let them even have the audacity to tell you that you can't do it. Let them try to get into your mind that you cannot do it. But deep inside, you know you can. Let them underestimate you. And I bring this up because today I want to talk about my oldest female cousin. I'm not going to say your name, but I'm going to say she definitely underestimated me in many ways. She forgets about her past but she chooses to bring up mine. She forgets all of the painful things that happened in her past, all of the times that she had to prove to herself, not to anyone else, but to herself, and how she failed that. When she was young, she was already an adult, but she was young. And she had to move. She moved because her mother wanted her to move. Because her mother felt like she was being sneaking, conniving, and playing both sides against the middle, meaning both parents against each other. So she had to move and she moved and she lived with my family. I was a preteen. So I remember and I remember well. That was a time she could have fought the fight. She could have let people underestimate her. She could have fought the fight and she could have won, but she didn't. She was still in that mindset of sneaky, conniving. I'm going to get what I want. I don't know where she learned that. I know where she learned it, but that's not my cross to bear. I don't know why she picked it up, but she picked it up because she felt like, hmm, if I do that, I'll get the attention that I want. Even after that. And it didn't work out. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. She left. Embarrassed. And that's when she ran and she got married. To someone who did not love her. Didn't even act like he loved her. Act like, uh, you might be the best that I can get, sir. Mm, why not? Come the fuck out. And that's how he treated her. Like, <laughs> come the fuck out. And when that failed, he, she could have let him underestimate her. She would have won. She would have been the rock star that she wanted to be. She would have come out on top. But instead, 
She lets someone else in her mind tell her, you need to start having sex. Which knocked her off her path. So therefore, again, she underestimated herself. So then she's been on this trajectory of listening to that mindset, continuing to underestimate herself as she continues to place herself in positions, allowing her to underestimate her own self-worth, her own independence, her own strength, her own power, and her own ability to heal from her own childhood trauma and drama that is really not her cross to bear. It was because somebody that was raising her was a narcissist. with an addiction and a roaming eye and not that loving heart. You know, like I said, when I stayed with you in Florida those 30 days, I have a really weird sleep pattern. I could sleep hard for three hours and then be up like it's time to get up and do something. So some of those nights I was up. I was up late at night and I was up early in the morning. And I heard a lot. But that's your cross to bear. I bring this up because each time it was like there were things, there were times that I shared certain things, personal, private things with you that you turned around and you shared them with somebody else. Anything that you ever told me in private, I've not shared with another. Another. I'm still not sharing it. But you chose to stab me in my back over and over again. And each time you did, you came back and you apologized. And each time I chose to forgive you. And you know what you said? I know. You're so forgiving. You'll always forgive me. That's when you underestimated me. I chose to forgive you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because I saw the scared little girl inside of you still to this day. You haven't healed. You haven't grown past 16. emotionally speaking. You've been perpetuating the same lie that was perpetuated to you. You're creating the same roadblock to your children that was created to you. You're not helping your child, you're hindering your child each and every time you are afraid to allow your child to be free. You're lying to yourself. You're using yourself Every time you allow someone else 
to use you. You think that the little what you're getting in return is worth what you got in here. But that soul and that spirit, that's forever. This is gone in a minute. But this is forever. I just want you to relook at, reevaluate, rethink, and reclaim your life. Go back. Go back to that first hurt. Get you a pen and get you some paper. And you write it all down. Write it all down. Don't forget any of it. And after you've written it all down, you go back and you reread all of it. Because then you're looking at it with new eyes. And you're able to heal from it. And once you heal from that, you set yourself free. And then that's whenever you're going to understand the value of setting your child free. However, I'm letting you know there's one caveat. From God's mouth to your ears. You can trust us if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's all up to you. I don't care. I am just the messenger. You lied on my mother. You lied on my mother. You said that she caused you to go through something that was of your own doing because you were an adult. Now this, I am going to break down to you because I remember. Like I said, I was a preteen. And this is whenever you were living with us. And it has to do with sneaking, conniving, being all that you think that you are going to be. Mm, mm, mm. And it has to do with that man that had that hat on and that drove that car. Do you remember him? You remember him. Because he taught you a valuable lesson. He scared the shit out of you. He made you run away. And at the time, as he was trying to prime you, trying to prepare you, my mother was trying to warn you. And you know what? Instead of heeding that warning, you thought she was trying to hate on you. She wasn't trying to hate on you. She didn't want that fool. <laughs> Did nobody want that fool? Because everybody could see that he was nothing but an old ass pimp. Hello. Everybody but. So the day that he came and he came and came up, picked you up. And we were all outside because we wanted to see. I know I was outside because I wanted to see. And my mother was outside like this because she too wanted to see. And you walked by her, sashaying by her, looking at her like, mm-hmm. This is how you do it, bitch. Watch and learn. 
get your pen and paper out, take some notes. And he walked you to the car and he walked you around, opened up the door, you slid in the car, you got in, looking all like, you know, you know how you look. He shut the door, he came around, and tipped his hat, winked like, mm, let me get that tonight. And that's exactly what he did. Now, he picked you up like a princess. But I was awake when he dropped you off. I didn't hear two car doors. I only heard one. I ain't even really hear you getting in the door good before I heard him burnt up the street. So I don't know if he pimped you out or if he just embarrassed you. But that was a time that you should have seen that, you know what? I am better than this. Not at the age that you are now. Allowing yourself to do the same thing. And whenever you fly out of town to see your favorite uncle and his friends, they don't comment about how wonderful, how spectacular, how glorious you are. They comment about how easy, how timid, how weak you are. You do something strange just to get a little bit of change. But after that experience that you had with that man in that car, Since then, you've been spreading around a, a lie, a rumor, saying that my mother forced you to go. She didn't. I know that. She knows that. And you most definitely know that. So there's a difference between you and her that I want to point out. The difference is as she has aged gracefully, she has had an opportunity to look back on her life. She has had an opportunity to think about some things and come to terms with some things and be honest with herself with some things. And for this, for this, I have prayed that that woman, that that lady go to heaven. For you, this is your time. This is your turn. And this is your talk to turn your life around. And until you can pick up the phone and call that lady and apologize to her, your life will continue to be a blur. Now you already know 
you and I are through. I love you unconditionally. I want the best for you. I want you to heal. I want you to grow. I want you to flourish, but I want you to know. Everything that you do, everything that you have, everything that you are, it all centers on you.